Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Let's Play Stormblood. I think it's time we return to the Vera and tell them of our quite somber victory. Really sorry I had to come to all this, but would you get on the dang mount you server? There we go. But yeah, for all my ranting and raving, and as much as the fandom as a whole, which I have problems with for other reasons, does quite have a point that this whole this whole side quest with Lakshmi kind of just shows up right the heck out of nowhere. I definitely do appreciate the plot developments and the character bits that, that come out of it, so I don't think it was entirely for a waste, um, even though Susano kind of was. Come on, you guys tried to help. Yeah, that tempering stuff is kind of bullcrap. And going back to, to my rant about solving the primal problem, that also ties into solving the tempering problem as well. So even all this 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 ends kind of sadly. It's I'm really glad to see that the Vera are not going to give up on the Kaliana and they're not going to like, you know, actually I can just teleport. They're not like condemning them for, you know, what they've done. And I I can I can really kind of appreciate that kind of mercy, you know. Even if all that did just kind of completely come out of nowhere and we didn't really learn all that much about the Ananza as a whole besides their personal beliefs and their god and stuff, but... What you gonna do? Yeah, what about my other friends, too? Like, we still haven't heard from, like, Uriange or anything about this whole thing. No one has even mentioned the poor guy, you know? Like, we know, we know Yasola is, well, still being treated, but otherwise is okay. And we know Thancred is on mission to find what the heck they've done with Kryl. But... Alright, so for once we've actually been completely ordered to rest and they've got everything under control and how long is it going to be before the last minute crisis where they're going to need our help anyway? God, 
God, he's already thinking of battle plans. We've been in here five minutes, Alpha. Now, holy cow, man. So I don't know if I actually mentioned this in the campfire scene at um, the mall site, but I don't think I quite did, or at least not quite this way, that me being fed has kind of been a joke throughout this this whole Let's Play series, even, even as I started this years and years ago in A Realm Reborn. And when I was playing Stormblood for the first time, um, like my very first experience of it, I was laughing my butt off at the fact that, holy cow, they are feeding us. Like, it's such a minor thing that you that doesn't really need to be said in, in an adventure game such as this. Like, it's, it's obviously implied that, that you rest when you need to. You know, you go potty when you need to. You eat when you need to. That stuff is already implicitly in, implied, but it is, it is really really nice that now they're actually actively showing scenes where this does indeed happen and that they use a well let's get together or, or let's discuss plans or have character revelations or you know let's have you know a welcoming committee like they actually have a setting for this kind of thing in which to take place and not just shove food in our face for the sake of, of shoving food in our face. And I really, I, I kind of appreciate that kind of touch because in, in many cultures, food is not just for sustenance, it's also for, you know, social gatherings and stuff like that. So finally, finally, we get some discussion and reminiscence about Ida. And frankly, this has been quite a long time coming because she impersonated her sister for six years for a reason. That's something you gotta answer for yourself, Lise. Well, sometimes we just all have to get it out. I do like how she always finds a way to, to be cheerful, even even after such, I don't want to say deep discussions, but she's definitely deep in her own thoughts and stuff like that, you know? Wow, shots fired. So this line right here, I have been waiting for this line for god knows how many episodes to show up because for the rest of this series, you are not going to have me shut up about their father, okay? I openly admit to having quite an obsession with the Charlands as a whole and a lot of that has to do with our main supporting cast, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, most of them, some way or another, have a connection to Charlan. With all this gallivanting, we go across the world and learning about other people's culture and religions and in various degrees, you don't really hear anything about their home and stuff like that. And 
home, not just the place, but the people you're with, is an important part of of who you are, and, and it does shape and define you for good or for ill, and this isn't something very much mentioned by most of the Scions at any sort of point. Their dad is mentioned in supplementary material, repeatedly. He has an entry in one of the lore books, okay? And yet, they rarely, if ever, mention him in game. They haven't even mentioned him in game by, by his first name, by the way, at any sort of point. Just, just vague references to, to, to their dad and, and whatnot. And I think this is a huge disservice for a number of reasons. Part of which has to do with Alpha Noah and Alize's character uh, developments and why they started off as, as, as such huge brats. And it is kind of peppered into dialogue here and there, but it is so easy to miss. They are rich, okay? They lived on an estate by their own admissions. Not a house, an estate, all right? Their dad is a powerful member of government. This largely probably explains why Alphano is so into politics and Alize is so just not interested in political bullcrap because that stuff probably got taken home a lot and she's probably read every every law book out of even just out of boredom at, at some points so that explains a lot about that and there is in one of the anniversary tales one of the very early ones for instance that dad over here is was not happy about Louis Soi coming over and dealing with the Calamity Crab, and he's equally not happy with his children coming over to Eorzea. But he's also the kind of person who respects an adult's ability to make their own choices in life. And, you know, one of the one of those things about, like, make it clear you're not happy about it, but also understand, you know, your life, your choice kind of thing. And... Given what I just said, I was partially under the impression, and wrongly so, but can you blame me, that the twins leave home at age 16. Like, just they're, they're just barely legal adults, so you can easily see it as, as sort of rebelling against it. And since, since Daddy is a politician and Alize hates that kind of crap, I got the impression that, you know, maybe there's, there's not... I don't want to say bad blood between them or anything like that, but... Certain, certainly, um, a lot of hot air and, st and stuff going on. And here it's clear that, at least currently, that's not the case. And it really is kind of interesting that her of all people, or at least so I thought, is saying, yeah, you know, I, it's been a very long time since, since I saw my family, you know, um, uh, you know, maybe I should make time to kind of really settle that. So that so that tells me that, you know, they didn't leave home as, you know, just, you know, rebellious kids who were like, heck yeah, like now I can do whatever the heck I want, you know, and I've chosen to do this. Like, they've stayed for their own reasons, but I'm actually not going to take those earrings because I have the Aetherite earrings. But that there's, you know... There's more to it than that, and and that they 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 do miss home, and it just makes me all the more sadder how home isn't really ever mentioned. And it's such an easy line of side dialogue to miss, but it just it just speaks so much. And that's not the first time I'm gonna rant about their dad because it is going to come up multiple times throughout the rest of the series. I am sorry if that annoys, is going to annoy the crap out of some people, but it's just one thing I will not let go. Mainly because they thought he was important enough to mention him by name multiple times in supplementary material and as well give him an entry in one of the lore books. So apparently he's important to the plot some way, somehow. And it just angers me that he just never gets mentioned in the game at all. So, why put this much effort into giving our camp him a character profile if it's not going to mean anything in the end? You know? So, with that whole rant, rant out of the way, and with this whole mess, now we can actually do what we intended to do before this whole Lakshmi diversion. That... Yeah, we're now going back to the peaks. 
we have successfully secured this area for the Imperial, from the Imperials, at least for the time being, so... I remember how they laughed. Alliance and resistance soldiers, eager for battle, trading jokes as we marched east towards the peaks. Beyond this last line of defenses lay the locks and the city. Breaching it would be no small feat. But we beat the Imperials back, just like that and we liberated a village, the first of many. So yeah, now we are at the have access to the southern part of the peaks, and sadly there is no easy way between the two other than teleporting and flying, which we do not have access to yet. Um, we can go back and finish, we're technically done with the fringes, so we can go back and take care of all that stuff to unlock flying in that zone, but we're, we're gonna do that off screen, because that's, that's not neither, neither here nor there. Yeah, we went through the ugly sight of those towers way back when we visited the peaks for the first time. You know, we just kind of went through that in her in her monologue where those imperial towers and metal are stinking up the place. So we have a bit of a ways to go here, but. Unlike the the northern part of the peaks, this one, yeah, there's there's not really no pretty flowers to kind of change up the place a bit, and the hot topography is is just quite barren. And while it's not covered in weapons and on fire like most of the fringes is, it's just still kind of bland. Like, I don't really feel like there's anything really worthwhile to, to look at, and the sheer size of this zone is kind of disappointing in, in that regard. I'm actually not fond of, of the bigger maps in, in these expansions, even though, for the most part, they've given us ample and better place teleports for the most part I'm looking at you Falcon's Nest um, but I prefer the the Aroma Born much more multiple but much smaller maps because eventually everything just becomes the same to look at you know like there's so many parts of these maps that you would you would never access unless unless you're flying and it's, it's kind of a waste of talent you know at least in my opinion Hi! Yeah, you guys have been quite the busy bees. Like, all we did was take care of Primal and just rust for a day.
Yeah, that's a good question, but let's see they're here nor thou. Let's plan our next plan of attack. Departmency of... Redundancy Department. Alright, so we've already attuned to the 8th, alright? So we don't need to worry about that. And we see Conrad and Pippin are here. Let's go talk to them real quick. Yeah, too bad we really didn't spend much time there. Um, obviously there's- no, I want to talk to your dad. There's- there's side quests in the area and stuff like that, but it's like, yeah, we- we- we jump into the Peering Stones. Oh, hey, Minago's like, oh, hey, this is my family, and then we eat, and it's, okay, thanks, bye. They're up to something, but rather than plot, we should plot our next move instead. Yeah, once again, striking while the iron is hot. Get letter. She's got her heart invested in this. So I find it kind of interesting that Elfino is, is going with Lise here. I don't think that's ever, they've ever split up in, in such a way like that. I'm glad for it, but... What are you doing to my cryo? Let us see. So, she lives. Impressive. Or merely lucky, though that too may prove a useful trait. My lord, what have you done to me? Though we Garlings are intellectually and physiologically superior in almost all respects, we lack the hereditary traits required for the reliable manipulation of ether, hence our unique inability to wield magics. This deficiency, for want of a better word, saw us subjected to decades of oppression by the lesser races, and we were eventually driven to seek shelter in the cold northern reaches of Ilsabad. Fortunately, said region, was replete with vast deposits of ceruleum, which proved instrumental in the development of Magitech, a revolutionary technology conceived to compensate for our disadvantage. Well, that's not what she asked. 
you know, you're giving her a history lesson, although this is more for the benefit of the player. But it still feels rather strange. It was with Magitek that we grew strong, that our nation became an empire. Yet, ultimately, this was an extrinsic solution to an intrinsic problem. What I wanted was not a crude device to be used in lieu of magic. Through modification of the Garlean genome, I argued that it might be possible to enhance a subject's ability to manipulate ether, effectively empowering them to wield magics. Alas, my theories were met with consternation in the Imperial Court. Only Lord Xenos, with commendable foresight and wisdom, deigned to support my research. You gave me this treatment, but I'm not Garlean. Alamegan, through and through. What you have been granted is far greater than mere magic. Before that lesser light, it is as a second sun. I am informed that Alagiri was recently occupied by the Resistance, and that an attack on Specular Imperatoris is considered imminent. This could provide an ideal opportunity to test her performance in the field. Your... skulls, was it? They have joined the garrison at the Watchtower? Yes, my lord. By your leave, I would rendezvous with them and lead a counter-attack against the insurgents. No. Even were you to leave now, you would not arrive in time. There is another duty I would entrust to you. Cred to the rescue! <laughs> so before long, we will certainly know where Kryl is and what we can do for her. Well, in that case, I'm glad I didn't get it, get my myself a new new tank coat a couple episodes back because, well, I just got another one because I haven't had a chance to wear it yet anyway. But that is going to be it for this episode, and we're just going to have to wait to see what impending plot the Imperials have in store for us. But in the meantime, thank you for watching, friends, and I shall see you then.